good morning students so in the previous class we have studied about uh, the encoding and all so what you mean by the digital modulation uh, baseband transmission and baseband transmissions all we have been seen in the encoding we have studied about what you mean by uh, the encoding how you are converting the uh, these particular bits into the signals and make them to propagate through the physical media we have studied uh, different methods uh, that nrz nrzi manchester bipolar 4b by 5b methods so today we are going to see the next uh, job of the data link layer so that is the data link layer is responsible for the creation of the frames and these frames is going to be uh, transmitted through the physical media to move from one node to the another node now here you are going to think about that uh, we are not go going to be concentrating on the the bit streams so here uh, we are going to means with the block of the data so this the block of that data this is encapsulated inside one particular frame and this frame is going to be transmitted or exchanged between the nodes so here you are going to be say that you are having a node a and a node b they are connected here to the physical media so node a if it is having some information that a block of data it it want to transfer this to the node b now node a is going to create a uh, the frame and then this particular frame is going to be uh, transmitted here so it is going to be sent this particular frame to the adapter now the the network adapter it is his responsibility to transfer all the bits from this particular frames to convert into the signal and propagate through the physical media and on the receiving side the signaling component on the node b is going to receive these particular bits uh, signals and convert it into the the bits so the adapter on the node b then collects together all these sequence of bits which are arriving on the link and deposit the corresponding frame in the b's memory now recognizing exactly the what set of bits constitute a frame that is the determining where the frame begins and ends so this is the main biggest challenge is going to be faced by the adapter that is the number of bits which is transmitted by the sender and the number of bits which is received by the receiver where the frame starts where the frame ends now in this uh, the framing we are having a two types of frames are there one is of a fixed size of framing another one is a variable size of framing in the fixed size of framing there is no need for defining the boundaries of the frames the size itself can be used as a delimiter so here we can say that the size of the frame is totally fixed example here it is a, a atm wide area network frame of a fixed size are called as a cells the another one type of the frames so what you call it as a variable size framing in this size of the frame is not a fixer it is a variable in variable size framing we need a way that define the end of the frame and begin of the the next frame we have to define that the frames what you are transmitting where the frame starts and where the frame ends that is uh, the end of the frame of the previous frame and where the begin of the next frame so example here we are going to see it in the local area network okay so these are the two types of the frames one is a fixed size another one is a variable size now uh, we are going to see the different types of the protocols uh, here so the first one here we are going to be see about uh, the byte oriented protocols it is one of the oldest approach uh, to the framing to view that is each frame as a collection of bytes or you can say it as it is a collection of characters okay rather than the collection of bits is it clear so here we are viewing the frame as a collection of bytes rather than a collection of bits okay such a byte oriented approach is exemplified by the older protocols so some of the older protocols are there that is a binary synchronous communication a protocol another one is a digital data communication message protocol okay so there is another one is also there that is a ppp is it clear so now we are going to see the the first one here that is a the binary 
synchronous the frame format the binary synchronous the communication protocol which was developed by the IBM in the late 1960s okay so if you are going to see this particular um, the frame format here so here you are having each field is a number indicating the length of that particular field in the bits okay so here synchronization bits are going to be used 8 bits is used to represent the synchronization bits okay soh is there header is there okay dangston is a stx body etx crs you know you are going to see what are all these particular the fields presented in this now each field is a number indicating the length of that particular field in the bits is it clear so here each field is a number indicating the length of that field in the the bits okay so here the transmission is going to be beginning with the leftmost bit that is from the synchronization syn here it has been written in the frame format is it clear so from the leftmost field the transmission is going to be begin now this binary synchronization uses a spatial characters known as a the sentinel characters that is used to indicate where the frame starts and where the frame ends okay now the begin of a frame is indicated by the synchronization character or you call it as an syn syn you nothing but it is a synchronization character so the begin of the frame is going to be indicated by the synchronization character SOH field indicates the start of the header. The STX field is going to indicate the start of the text. Is it clear? And the next one, the body is going to be contain the data which it receives from the above label. The ETX field is going to indicate the end of the text. So CRC, this is used for the error detection. Is it clear? That is a cyclic redundancy check. It is used to detect the errors when the frame is issued on the receiver side. The header is going to contain the information of who is the sender and who is going to receive it. that relevant information is presented in the header. So this is here all about this particular the binary synchronous the frame format. Now we are going to be see what is the problem associated with this particular the binary synchronous frame format. Now the problem is with the senatorial approach is that here we are going to use the uh, ETX the character is it clear so that is going to indicate the end of the text this end of the text is represented using one the special character or called as a senatorial character but this is spatial or senatorial character might may appear in the data portion of the frame is it clear so this problem can be overcome by inserting a uh, the data link that is a escape character what is what you call it as a dle character in the body of the frame is it clear so whenever the etx character may appear in the body so before that what you are going to do we are going to place this escape character that is the dle character is it clear whenever the receiver encounters the dle character it removes it from the data section it is going to treat the next character what it is receiving is a data it is not a flag it is not the etx character it is not going to treat it as a end of the text it is going to treat it as a the data before this it has received the dle character so the dle character gives the information to the receiver the next character whatever you are receiving don't treat it as a the delimiting flag or the etx character you treat it as the the data is it clear so in this way here we are going to solve this particular the the problem so this is what you are going to be call it as a, the use of the escape character and this approach is often going to be called it as a character stuffing because the extra characters are inserted into the data portion of the frame okay now the next one here we are going to see the another one here it is a ppp frame format will be there so this ppp is nothing but it is a point to point protocol so ppp defines how to define devices can negotiate the establishment of the link and the exchange of the data here 
this ppp defines the format of the frames which is to be exchanged between the two devices is it clear the ppp defines the format of the frame the frame which is going to be exchanged between the two communicating devices is it clear it also defines how two devices can authenticate each other okay it also defines how the network layer data are encapsulated in the data link frames as i already told the responsibility of the data link layer is to encapsulate the data which is received from its upper layer the upper layer is a network layer so that is from the network layer whatever the data you are receiving you have to be enca encapsulate in the data link frame so the ppp does not provide the flow control the sender can send several frames one after another with no concern about the overwhelming the receiver now if you are going to see the frame format of this ppp so here you are having the flag address control all these are of a one one byte each that is eight bits is it clear so flag is of one byte address is of one byte control field is of one byte protocol is going to be representing with one or two bytes will be there payload is a the variable okay fcs is of uh, two to four bytes will be there and the last one flag is going to use of one bytes now what is the flag if ppp frame is going to be start and end with a special flag that is a one byte flag with the bit pattern is it clear that is the zero six ones and the next one is a zero is it clear so this ppp frame format is going to be start and end with a flag so when this bit pattern appears indicating that yes this frame starts here and when the same pattern is going to be appear at the end of that particular frame that is a zero six ones and the next one is a zero indicating this is the end of the frame okay now the next one here is the address field is there the address field in this protocol is a constant value if you set to all ones that is all eight bits are set to one indicating the broadcast address okay and even during the negotiation the two parties may agree to omit this particular right now the control field this field is set to some constant value that is one one zero zero and remaining all four zeros the protocol field the protocol field defines what is being carried in the data field either the user data or the other information it identifies that to which high level protocol that data is going to be transmitting such as ip or ipx is it clear now the payload field defines that is field carries either the user data or the other information so here the data field is a sequence of bytes so the maximum uh, the payload it can carry in this frame is up to 1500 bytes is it clear the ppp frame format can carry the maximum payload that is up to 1500 bytes next one is a fcs what is this fcs the frame check sequence it is simply a two or a four bytes it is a standard that crc cyclic redundancy check it is used to detect the transmission errors okay now here we are going to study about the byte stuffing is it clear what do you mean by the byte stuffing as a byte oriented protocol the flag in this ppp is a byte and it is used to indicate a start and end of that particular frame if the same sequence is going to be appear in the payload area so we have to uh, give information to the receiver that the same sequence that is a flag the bits which is appeared here you have to treat it as a data not as a, a flag so for that here what we are going to is that we need to be escaped whenever it appears in the data section of the frames so for that we are going to use one escape byte okay so this escape byte is zero and continuously you are going to use a five ones next one is a zero and last one is a one is it clear which means that every time the flag like pattern appears in the data section this escape byte or you call it as a extra byte is stuffed 
to tell to the receiver that the next byte whatever you are going to receive it is not a flag you treat it as a data okay so this is all about the pre pp frame format so the next one we are going to be see about the ddcmp frame format so this is uh, uh, the problem here which you already discussed about the character stuffing and all and what you mean by the byte stuffing as i already discussed about that is in the ppp frame format escape byte you are going to be inserting okay so the next one is about a ddcmp so we stop it here and continue with the next class